Hey, what's up guys? Clue here, coming back with a new video. Today's video we're going to do a little bit different, um, talking about the announcement of the reworks for Kale and Morgana, um, The Righteous and The Fallen. Uh, so basically, light, dark, very basic kind of thing. Uh, so this is a rework to two current champions. Uh, but yeah, so I'll just read through the little intro here. Uh, two sisters were born from... The aspects of justice. Kale the righteous wields celestial might and purges lands of the guilty. Morgana the fallen refused to forsake her people. She bound her wings and receded to receded into shadow, pained by her sister's choice. Two sisters born from justice chose opposing paths. They bide their time, waiting for the destined day when they cannot evade from e from their other half. Okay, so first of all, starting off with the Morgana update, if you notice here, it doesn't look like she's getting anything, her abilities changed, because it's only a KL ability, and I had heard talks that that was the case, so we'll have to see. Uh, so, Morgana update, split between her mortal and celestial self, but wholly opposed to the unyielding ideology of her twin sister. The dark enchantress, wow, it's hard to say, has been us visually updated to match her divine, uh, divine origin. Morgana has bound her wings by choice, reflecting her connection to humanity and our shared suffering, but her ultimate reveals her birthright. So they're all the abilities. Um, in addition, the fallen shadowy spells have new animations and visual vibrancy. Already a powerful pick on, in both mid and bot lane, Morgana's abilities will remain, oh, just remain the same. Save for her ultimate, which now grants move speed towards enemies to ensure they can't escape their share of torment. That's going to be interesting. I don't think she needed the movement speed. She provided a really good um, zone control with the ultimate already. Just the movement speed's going to make her pretty damn hard to get out of her ult. I don't know. We'll have to see like what they show on... Um, PBE, because I'm assuming that comes out like in two days or something, or tomorrow, or even out now, because I think this has been up for a day already. Um, but yeah, so her, she's a very basic kind of update. Uh, she's just getting a visual update, which looks pretty nice, but very similar to what she already had. So that's a Q, her E, wait, is it E? No, E, W, so Q, W, E. And then that's her ultimate. The ultimate looks really, really nice. Um, actually, all the abilities look really nice. I'm just worried that the Q is going to be hard to see. And um, we'll have to see the other skins because I'm assuming it's at the bottom like usual. I have done a quick scroll through. Um, so yeah, here's, here's Kale, the one that's really getting reworked. From what I heard, they're trying to keep her the same. But we'll have to kind of see. Um... So this is a passive. Uh, we'll just watch the video and then read through it. Okay, wait. So let's read through this because this is interesting. Because she changes based on her level, not based on... Like her E kind of thing, like she used to. It looks uh, so divine ascent. Kayla ascends through her fo through four forms before reaching her divine state. Uh, at level one, she gains zealous. Um, Kayla's order attacks grant attack a uh, stacking attack speed. Wow, well, at max stacks. This is like a tongue twister. I don't know why I can't talk properly. Uh, Kayla becomes exalted and gains movement speed towards enemies so basically um yeah this is just a basic here that's her level six i'm assuming uh when kale is exalted her attacks launch flaming waves dealing bonus magic damage so as you can see they go through yep uh and then at level 11 so yeah so 11's her yeah 11 is your um level two for ultimate so basically it's following ultimate levels uh so they're trying to keep her like a very big hyper carry still but more of like a 
melee, I guess. I don't know. We'll have to read further. Uh, so, yeah. At level 11, it evolves into a fully ranged champion. So, yeah. Up until level 11, she's only melee. She doesn't have an E from what it looks like there. Interesting. I, I don't know how it's going to work with um, Runan's Hurricane. Because that was a core item on her. And now it seems like you got to wait till level 11 to get it instead. So, yeah, just have to see how builds look like when she comes out. Uh, but, yeah, level 16. Uh, Kale takes on her final form, becoming permanently exalted. Her flame, her flaming waves deal true damage. Holy crap. She's going to be really, really good late game. Depends on how much true damage, but that's massive because all your tanks and all that, are like, at that point, your tanks are usually, I don't know, full build, or at least three or four items in. And if a Kale's ahead, just two levels, she could be doing true damage while everyone else is still level 14 kind of thing. And getting two levels up with the Kale wasn't too hard back in the back before she was updated because she was a farmer. That That's how you played her until you got three items and then you walked in and killed everyone because you had your ultimate to make yourself immune. Yeah, so we're going to go on to the Q, uh, Radiant Blast. Actually, I'm just going to read this one first because I feel like it's better to read it. Uh, Kale conjures a portal which shoots a flaming blade at an enemy, shredding armor and magic resist and slowing her target. This attack explodes to damage enemies next to the target as well. Okay, so basically it's the same Q. The only difference is it explodes and hits a target next to her. Okay. Was that... Is it just a flow through? Or does... Like, if they're standing here, does it go bang, bang? Or does it only go through? Because it says next to the target as well. But it kind of depends, I guess. I don't know. As I said, we'll have to really see how this game... How it goes out. Uh, so, again, looks very similar. Uh, Kale heals uh, Celestial Blessing. I even think that's the same name. Uh, Kale heals herself and, uh, and an allied target, giving both a significant boost, burst speed. That's different, but not by much. The only thing that's different here is it's an and an allied target. If you took away this part here, it's the same ability. Yeah. Let's quickly look. So it looks like he was max range there. You can see like there's a little circle. Uh, can we get it? Nah, it's not showing up. Now. Okay, I can see like a little like concave there, which looks like that might be the maximum range. But then we don't want to take any of that by. Um, what's it called? How it is because we don't know what level these are. We don't know. How much, um, what items she has. Because you don't want to take what he how much healing that did. Because that's a fair bit. But is that the maximum it can do? Yeah. You don't take numbers for these kind of announcements. Uh, so E. This is the one that needs to change. Because a passive now is that. Uh, so E is now a passive and an active. I believe it did have a passive before. But um, Starfire Spellblade. Kale's basic attacks deal bonus damage, which scales with both her ability, her power, and attack damage. Yep, so that's pretty similar. Active, Kale's next basic attack is range and deals a portion of the target's missing health as bonus magic damage. After ascending to a flame, this attack damage uh, damages enemies next to the target as well. Okay, so it's only one attack now. So it used to be just a... Uh, I think it was three seconds, four seconds, and up like that, and then cooldown reduction changed to how long you could keep it up. Because I think by level nine you could keep it up permanently. Um, but yeah, it's going to be the next auto attack instead of auto. How many auto attacks you can fit into one? Uh, into that little time frame. Uh, but also. Once you are aflamed, which I believe was level level six. So once you're level six, you get uh, damaging to 
uh, attack damages enemies next to the target as well. So let's quickly have a look. Okay. That one you can see is a circle, unlike uh, Q where it seems to go straight through. That one's a circle, so you can tell that that's a AOE kind of effect. Uh, it says target as well, so you can use it for farming. Which could also be a plus or a minus because if you miss your auto attack, does it? Um, yeah, you could miss your ability on your uh, champion. But because it is a uh, what's it called modifier, I am pretty sure if you have Rune on Hurricane, that should work on it. So you could actually get three. Starfire Spellblade active procs if you uh, if you had the uh, Rune Arunant Hurricane That's all gonna be tested as well. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I haven't got inside knowledge or anything. I'm not part of the partner program but Yeah, so this is the ultimate um, so Very much chaos staying the same just little nice changes to kind of Modernize her is kind of the thinking I'm getting from here Ah, uh, so Divine Judgment. Kale bestows invulnerability on herself or an allied target for a few seconds. While invulnerable, purifying swords fall f in a circle around her target, damaging enemies in the area. So not only do they get invulnerability, which she used to give, but now they have swords dropping from the sky. Depends on how big the circle is, depends on how strong it is, and what it's scaling is kind of thing. But let's have a look. It's probably I've I think I've seen this one, it looks kinda of nice. I saw the reveal trailer about it, but I only saw it in Korean. Alright, so yeah. That's a decent whoa. That's quite short for the ultimate, but is at level one, so we can't really take that into consideration, but I just gotta check. That does do, like, nice numbers, it looks. Again, numbers aren't a thing we want to look at, but it looks nice, as well as... What health was Teemo on? So, depending on how that fits to the game, I think she's kind of, like... She's level 11 there. So, that's second level, you'd assume. Uh... Yeah, it looks pretty good. I want to see its ratios and scaling. Um, but yeah, so this is the gameplay because we've just looked at all the abilities now. Uh, let's have a look at gameplay. Um, so playing as Kale. As Kale, you'll smite the unjust with celestial powers, which scale higher each time you transform. Before you can wreak havoc, havoc on the guilty, play around your opponents and farm cautiously until you have your ultimate ability. In this early stage, use Starfire Spellblade to keep the enemies at bay and Radiant Blast to punish their overconfidence. Soon your Divine Ascent transforms uh, your ordinary abilities into obliterating vehicles of destruction. Rally your team together and find groups of opponents who cannot escape Divine Judgment. Use Celestial Blessing if you, you or an ally struggle or to close... Okay, or to close the distance on fleeing enemies. I don't get that. I, I get what they're saying, but it didn't make sense in my head. I don't know why. Um, in your final form, your survivability and team fight advantage swell into an overwhelming crusade, ending all enemies in your path. Yeah. So very much similar to um, how Sivir has a like 400 CS uh, win. Uh, what's it called? Basically free win. Once she gets 400 CS, she wins. Uh, seems like once Kale gets level 16, it pretty much is a win. Uh, so yeah, we'll just quickly watch this video. Why is this muted again? Just gonna restart it, because it was muted. She got good cutting potential. So you can see how the ultimate's used. <laughs> Morgana and that uh, used. Smart that they did do that though. 
I saw not only that did you see Kao, you also saw how Morgana looks, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, so very much going to be team oriented, uh, which Kale kind of was previously, anyways. But she does look quite strong. Hopefully, they don't either push her into the ground like they do with Zoe and uh, Makali and all that. Hopefully, it's just they leave her at a nice kind of point where she is now. She's not broken. She's not crap. She actually finds quite a nice little spot right now. If you were to pick Kale right now, uh, I don't think her win rate's crazy good, but I certainly can win many games on her. Um, she was my top lane pick for a solid, like, two months last season. Um, and I think I lost, like... I think it was 10 games to 20 games because I didn't play much top but I still played her and half my games I won so <laughs> she's not horrible uh, so yeah tips and tricks uh, rather than use divine judgment on yourself consider protecting a tanky ally with a great engage so it's very similar to a what's it called Oriana ult you put it on them because then the AOE goes on the tanky person that's running into them. You don't want to be running into them. You want to be at range still. Uh, let enemies blow their ultimates while your ally is invulnerable. Then purge them in a storm of swords and fire. Uh, the stages of your divine ascent gives uh, give you a huge power spike throughout the game. Anticipate when you out damage your opponent and decimate them when you do. Uh, while you have great solo potential, you're your strongest in team fights. Damage to enemies near your blast, uh, target from Starfire, Spellblade, and Radiant Blast. In combination with protective abilities, safeguard your team and inflict devastating damage on enemies. So yeah, it's not just, she's not just an auto attack, but she's very much an auto attack champion. She has other abilities. So they're not changing her really much at all. So that's currently the um, image. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Thick. Uh, splash art. So that's for. I don't know what that is. It looks like Mo Zyra there, but it's not. It's Morgana and Kale, I guess. I don't know which skin that is. Maybe these are new skins coming. Ooh. I think they are. So it looks like there might be two skins coming. They look pretty nice. I do like this one. The green looks really nice. Not that I'm a fan of green. So red, blue. So I'm assuming that's Kale and that's Morgana. She's got the sword, so I'm assuming it is Kale, yeah. So these are the skins for Kale here. This is what they kind of the, the splash out looks like. So Aether Wing looks pretty nice. I want to see like actually in game though. Uh, I actually don't know all the names of her skins, but they should have looked pretty nice. I think that's Pentakill, if I'm correct. Let's quickly look at all the splash shots. No, that's Pentakill. Uh, Riot. I think that's a season one one. I hope they don't sell the season one. Just the elitist in me. Not the elitist, but like the collector in me is like, ah, I don't want anyone else to have this skin. It's like if they rework Ramus and give away King Ramus to everyone, it then gets rid of the whole purpose of, you know, King Ramus. Although they did do that with Grey Warwick and um, Medieval Twitch, so... It wouldn't surprise me, but I just don't want them to. Uh, I don't recognize that skin, but yeah. So that's Bewitching Morgana. Uh, ghost print, uh, ghost, something ghost. I can't think what it is. Forsaken, Lunar Wraith. I didn't notice this. This is a chef one. What? And that looks to be a new skin. So, very curious to know how long they are. I'm assuming how long it is till they come out is probably a month's time, give or take. Because patch comes out tomorrow because it's been pushed back a day. So, currently it's Wednesday 20th of recording and usually Wednesday is the date of record. Oh, day of... um update but because of president's day in america it's now been pushed back to the thursday if i'm correct 
I haven't actually loaded up League of Legends today. So, usually you have two week patch cycles. So it could be as early as the 7th, but I'm feeling more like the 21st of um, March is when this is going to come out. So, because you need to do quite a bit of testing. I, I'd hope they'd push it back and make sure it's ready. Then just give out an Akali, an Aatrox, uh, you know. Those kind of chances are really, really too strong. I'd rather they fine tune, uh, fine -tune Kale more so than Morgana, because Morgana's not getting much change. Um, in PBE, so people don't get grumpy and then cause Riot to have to just hit her with the sword and cut her to pieces because it kind of sucks to uh, the people that are Akali mains, Aatrox mains and all that because, first of all, I don't think maining's the best idea because you need to, if it gets banned, then you're in a bad position. But, um, what was going to say? Yeah. They now have lost their champ. They've got to find something else. And, yeah, Carly's not in a good place right now. But, looking at how they did Zoe, they should bring uh, they should be bringing Carly back in a good place soon. Uh, but, yeah, so that's that's our look at Kale and Morgana, the Righteous and the Fallen. I uh, really want to see these skins in action. And I'm assuming these two skins here are new. Because I haven't seen those at all. Um, but it's quite a big rework for them. That's two champions and what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 skins that are being reworked. And then their base skins, so that's 15. And then possibly two more skins from what it looks of each, so that that could be up to like 20 skins they've just had to rework. So I'd assume they've done quite a bit of testing on this. Um, this was kind of announced, I don't know, I think I, I heard about it November last year. So, and I'm sure people have known about it well before I found out. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you didn't, you're more than welcome to hit the dislike button. If you want to catch any of my content, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time.